The third memorial lecture in honor of the late former governor of Hondo State, Dr. Lucia Gunkokumuagagu, CON, has been held in Lagos. The event, which took place on Tuesday, 13th of September 2016, exactly three years after he bid it farewell to the earth, brought together important dignitaries to the venue of the event at the Civic Center Victoria Island, Lagos. The event was organized by the Olusha Gwagagu Foundation, a foundation charged with the duty of immortalizing the name and legacy of lit Dr. Olusha Gwagagu, C.O.N., and actualize his personal credo, which was to leave things better than he met them, and to further all the ideals he passionately worked towards. The Olusha Gwagagu Foundation provides a platform for providing intellectual excellence, good governance, and national development. The event, which was compared by the chairman, CEO of Biscon Communications, Prince Bisiolatilo, commenced with an opening prayer said by Reverend Kinsley Agu. The former deputy governor of Lagos State, Otumba Femi Pedro, represented Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunumbu as the chairman of the occasion. Also in attendance was His Excellency, Benjamin William Nkapa, former president of Tanzania, who was the keynote speaker. Ambassador Babagana Kingibe, the guest speaker, His Excellency, Chief Ulushe Gwobasenjo, GCFR, former President of Nigeria, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, former Governor of Ikiti State, and current Minister for Mines and Steel, Senator Ikenwachuku and wife. The introduction of the speakers was done by Chief Yemi Adefulu, MFR, which then ushered the opening remarks of the chairman of the event, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu who was represented by former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Otumba Femi Pedro. In his address, he eulogized the personality of late Dr. Lucia Gunkokumuagagu while he applauded the organizers of the event on the importance of such event in honor of such great men. It was Isaac Newton who said, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. He was right. Memorial events like this afford us the opportunity to learn from or be reminded of the eminent men and women whose lives and pursuits in the service of Africa's people serve as a step in the stairway to the realization of Africa's full potential. Next was the keynote speaker, His Excellency, Benjamin William Mkapa, former president of Tanzania, who took to the podium to deliver the memorial lecture on the imperatives of regional cooperation and integration in Africa. He gave a background of the topic as it took the audience through a trajectory on the influence of the colonial powers on the integration and cooperation in Africa. He later gave some of the imperatives, such as liberation from colonialism and apartheid, continental free trade, abolishment of slave trade and oppression by the colonial masters. His Excellency, Benjamin William Mkapa, passionately pleaded for all Africans to see themselves first as Africans, irrespective of their countries. He demanded for more cooperation and integration among the African states. The imperative of regional economic cooperation and integration was also acknowledged even by the colonial masters. In East Africa, we had the East African High Commission, which provided common services for the British colonial territories and protectorates. I dare say some similar services were to be found in British West Africa. Certainly, similar institutions could be found in the colonies ruled by the French and the Portuguese. With independence came the drive to institutionalize this drive for cooperation to mutual advantage. In East Africa, we formalized the commission into a community with a list of community matters, a ministerial team under the authority of the three presidents and a community legislature. Alas, disagreements about the allocation of industries and manufacturers, among others, led to its collapse in 1977. 
We have now revived it. And I'm glad to say that this happened under my presidency. And I hope that this time its breath will hold it. Afterwards, the guest speaker, Babagana Kingibe, who was a former ambassador, former minister for foreign affairs, internal affairs, power and steel between 1993 and 1998, national president of the defunct SDP and vice presidential candidate of late Chief M.K. Uabiola, then mounted the postroom to deliver his lecture. He gave a brief history as to how he got to meet and worked with late Chief Olusha Gwagagu, whom he spoke passionately about in the lecture. He defined the term regional cooperation as the association between two or more countries to address and share challenges such as how to combat terrorism, piracy, pandemic, and other across-border crimes. He said regional integration is a step forward from regional cooperation. He defined it as a process by which neighboring institutions agree to establish joint institutions for decision and policy making to achieve common goals and objectives. He charged African countries to forge a common ground for benefits like free trade areas which encourage reduction of tariffs between members, customs union, a common market of free movement of capital and services, economic union as well as political union which will all permit a common government. The literature on integration identifies five levels or stages of this progression as follows. One, free trade area. That is the reduction of tariffs between members. Two, customs union. That is a common external tariffs. Three, common market or the free movement of capital and services. For economic union, where there are no barriers for internal trade, free movement of labor, harmonized tax rates, common monetary and fiscal policy, and five, political union, which is the end state of common government or political union. Integration is therefore a gradual phenomenon that covers essentially three main stages. Economic cooperation, as we have said, which entails a process of the removal of mutually agreed trade barriers between groups of countries through the signing of a common accord. B, a single market, which is the creation of a common or single market for goods, people, capital, and services and three, the political integration, which emerges following the complete integration of the economies of the countries in a given regional organization, institutions run by visionary and committed bureaucracy and a focused political class. The goodwill message was given by the grand patron of the Ulusha Gwagagu Foundation and former president of Nigeria, His Excellency, Chief Ulusha Gwobasanjo, GCFR, who expressed his gratitude to God and on behalf of the Foundation appreciated the speakers, organizers and all the participants. He stated that, though there are some steps taken in effect in regional cooperation and integration, but that a lot more still needs to be done to unite Africa and bring about a lasting cooperation and integration between African countries, be it Anglophone, Francophone and so on. I want to begin by Thanking all of you here present. I want to thank my brother, President Nkapa. And um, I want to thank you for your succumbing at long last <laughs> to be here. And um, they, I want to thank you for your tenacity. We have had it in economic terms. We have had it in social terms. We have had it in political terms. 
what is the best interest of Africa. For me, it is shameful, shameful that 50 years after our independence, we are still divided, Francophone, Anglophone, Lusophone, Arabophone. Why have why? And that you see part of the pain of our integration. He further highlighted the gimmicks of the colonial masters and world powers in the continuous subjugation of African nations through the divide and rule tactics, but warned that such antics must be rejected if regional cooperation and integration in Africa is truly imperative to all member states, such that we have a common security and shared prosperity. Plaques of honor were then presented to the speakers who took turns to receive them. The daughter of the late chief Ulusha Gwagagu, who is a member of the Ulusha Gwagagu Foundation, also gave an update on the progress made by the foundation future prospects and the need of the foundation to further give back to the society, which is one last legacy of late Chief Ulushe Gwagagu. And I'd like to thank everybody for making today and for our distinguished speakers who have done such an amazing job with today's lecture. One key takeaway for me is for us to truly be integrated in Africa is that we need to be united. The foundation, as stated by Uncle Bisi Olatilo, is to immortalize the name and legacy of my late father, Dr. Olusha Kwangago, to live up and seek to actualize his personal credo, which has resonated throughout this hall today, to leave things better than the way he met them, to further, further, to further the ideals he lived by and worked tirelessly and passionately towards, particularly intellectual excellence, good governance, and national development. The closing remark was given by Senator Ike Wachuku, while a minute silence in honor of the deceased was observed. Eternal rest ran the soul of Olusegun Kukumo Agagu. The vote of thanks which brought the event to an end was given by Dr. David Adeleke, who was the chairman of the Olusegun Agagu Foundation who also pleaded for continuous support of the foundation. May God continue to grant the soul of late Chief Ulushe Gwagagu, C.O.N., eternal rest, as we look forward to the fourth edition of the Memorial Lecture.